in, in the last video, we saw that um, if you wanted to take, I don't know, a plus b to the nth power, and if n is larger than really 2, but really, especially larger than 3, it is very tedious to multiply it out, essentially using the distributed property or you know, kind of doing polynomial multiplication or FOIL or however you learned it. It is extremely, extremely tedious. And then we learned the binomial theorem, which said this, that that is equal to the sum, the sum from k is equal to 0 to n of n choose k. Right, where that was, you know, what we learned in combinatorics is, as uh, the binomial coefficient, and that's why it's called the binomial coefficient because it's actually the coefficients in the binomial theorem, of x to the n minus k. Oh, sorry, I keep writing x. Let me undo that. Edit, undo, edit, undo. Oh, it's taking too long. Oh, let me just. Oh no, that's not what I wanted to do. Let me erase it. I'm, okay. Keep writing x. It could be an x, but then this would have to be an x here as well. Maybe I should do that. Of a to the n minus k times b to the k. So each term, you know, the n stays constant, but each term you start at k equals zero and you keep incrementing up. And we did an example to solve a plus b to the fourth power in the previous uh, video, and as you saw, that was Tedious, but less tedious than actually multiplying it out. And uh, you know, if if you get really fast at at computing, you know, n choose k for different n's in k, it, it could be reasonably fast. So what I want to do is I'm going to show you a slightly faster method than what we just did, um, kind of a, a faster way to compute the binomial coefficients. And then after that, I'm going to show you a super fast way that, short of memorizing the coefficients, which I actually know some people who've done that is a, a, a pretty amazing way to essentially multiply out any bi binomial. So what's what's my pseudo fast way of doing it? Well, I, I hinted in the last uh, in the last presentation that we that those coefficients were actually terms of a Pascal triangle. So what's a Pascal triangle? So if we start off with a one, and then you just go. Actually, let me let me do it in the well. Yeah, let me do it right here, and then actually let me start with two ones. And what you do is you take the sum of both of these, so that's a 2, and then you bring down a 1 to the left and the right hand side. And notice, these are the coefficients of a plus b squared. right? And these are the coefficients of a plus b. You could say a plus b to the 1, right? 1a one plus 1b. One this is a squared, 1a, so you could rewrite, you know, a plus b squared is 1a squared plus 2ab plus 1b squared. So this is a co these are the coefficients of a plus b squared. Now let me arbitrarily switch colors. And so 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3. Bring down the 1, bring down the 1. And now we have the coefficients for a plus b to the third, which we computed in the, that was the very first thing we did. We actually multiplied it out. And we, we just know the pattern. The first coefficient is 1. So it's 1 a to the third b to the 0, so we don't have to write the b, plus 3. We just decrement this exponent 1, 3 a squared b plus 3 a b squared, and then plus 1 a to the 0, which is just 1, b cubed. So that was pretty fast. And we could keep going down the Pascal triangle. So let's, let's do the next one. So we can bring down a 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. 3 plus 3 is 6. And I, this is neat. This I mean that just very simply, you can actually generate binomial coefficients without having to compute them. Very simple, I guess you could call it an algorithm or drawing. Or one, and it's symmetric, just as you would expect it, right? Because you could easily switch b and a. A plus b is the same thing as b plus a, so you should essentially get the same answer. And so we just very quickly we figured out the binomial coefficients for a plus b to the fourth, which was a lot faster than we did in the last example, right? A plus b to the fourth. So then we, you know, we I think you get the point, but so it's one. Let me write it in a different color. One a to the fourth b to the zero plus four. A cubed 
b square b b to the one plus six a squared b squared, which makes sense that you know this is the middle number and they both and a and b have the same exponent at this point, and then plus four a we decrement it b cubed plus b to the fourth one b to the fourth right a to the zero so that's why we didn't write there so one b to the fourth. Right, so once and and that was very fast compared to what we had to do at the end of the last video, and then it, we could just keep going, you know, for five. So one, one plus four is five. Four plus six is ten. Six plus four is ten. Four plus one is five. Bring down the one. So these are the these are the coefficients for the expansion of a plus b to the fifth power. And so this is a reasonably fast way of doing it, although it can get uh, it, one, it'll take a lot of space, uh, and it 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 can, it can work reasonably well, you know, for up to a power of I don't know eight or nine or ten. Um, even then, it starts to get pretty big and cumbersome. But you know, for powers up to seven or eight or nine, you could do this. You could draw it out really fast and do this, and uh, it's probably faster than actually computing each of the binomial coefficients. Although you might be pretty fast at you know computing n choose k, in which you don't have to do this. So with that out of the way, let me show you an even faster way of doing it, short of memorizing it. And this will allow you to really calculate a plus b to the nth, you know, to the to the twentieth power, almost in your head, depending on how good you are at arithmetic in your head. So here is the trick, and I and I encourage you to experiment for why it works, but it does work. And I mean, uh, and it's not even a trick. It's just. I mean, you know, and this 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 Pascal's triangle isn't even a trick. Pascal's triangle is just an alternative way to generate binomial coefficients, and what I'm about to show you is just another way of essentially generating the binomial coefficients. Although it's probably a, a faster way to compute them, and it's a good project for you to think about why this works. So I'm just going to start with a very concrete example. Instead of a plus b, let, let me just do x plus y, just because. You might see the binomial, the binomial theorem written that way. So let's say x plus y to the tenth power. This would take me all day if I was to actually multiply it out. It would be, it would take me probably, um, probably twenty to thirty minutes without making careless mistakes to actually figure out all the binomial coefficients. Maybe not that long, but it would take me a while. And to draw Pascal's triangle would fill up a whole page, and I'd still probably make a careless mistake. So how can I do this? So what you do is, so one thing you know, that this is going to have. Uh, this is going to have 11 terms, right? Because you're going to start with x to the 10th, y to the 0, and you're going to go all the way to y to the 10th, right? So if you start at 0 and you go to 10, that's 11 terms. So this has 11 terms. What I want you to do is just write down the first, just the numbers. You know, you can almost count the terms. You don't have to go all the way to 11, and I'll show you. But let's, actually, let's write all the way to 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Just squeezed it in, and and you'll see you don't actually don't have to go all the way to eleven. You could probably just stop at six. So here's the trick. We know that the the first term is going to be x to the tenth, right? We know that x to the tenth, and actually, I mean, we know that it's going to be x to the tenth. And the second term is going to be x to the ninth. Then it's going to be x to the eighth. It's going to be x to the seventh. It's a little tedious. X to the sixth x to the fifth, x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x, and then there's going to be no there's going to be x to the zero or just one. And let me just do the uh the the y's. So this was this was x to the tenth. There's oh, that's not that's not bright enough, this color. So there's this is y to the zero, so we don't have to write it there, but then we have a y y to the first, y squared y to the third, y to the fourth, y to the fifth, which makes sense, this is the middle term, y to the sixth, y to the seventh, y to the eighth, y to the ninth. And I don't want you to get confused. Each of these is a separate term. I don't want you to think I'm multiplying them all. Right? And then. We just have to figure out the coefficients on each of these terms. That, those are divider lines that I attempted to draw. I wasn't trying to confuse you more. I just wanted to, because they seem to be running together, each of the terms that I'm writing. If 
But I think you know what I'm doing. So now we have to figure out the coefficients. And then this is, this is the neat part. So we know that the coefficient on the first term, let me draw a dividing line here and here. The coefficient on the first term is always 1, right? So the coefficient's 1. So the coefficient on the second term is going to be the exponent on the first term times its coefficient, so 10 times 1, divided by the term that it is. So it's going to be 10 times 1, 10 times 1 divided by 1. So it's going to be 10. The third term's coefficient is going to be the exponent on the x, right? So it's 9 times its coefficient, which is 10. So it's going to be 9 times 10 divided by the term it is. So, nine, so it's going to be 9 times its coefficient, 10, divided by 2. So what's 9 times 10? That's 40, uh, that's a 90 divided by 2, which is 45. And you keep going. The fourth term is going to be the third term's exponent. So it's going to be 8 times, let me write this down in a different color. It's going to be 8, right? 8 times its coefficient times 45 divided by which term it is. So it's the third term divided by 3. Well, that's just 8 times 15. And we'll see, that's 80 plus 40. So that's equal to 120. So that is the fourth term. And so then, let me just draw these dividers. I know it's getting a little complicated. And I'm writing it all out like this, but if you practice this enough, you can actually just write it straight out. And so the fifth term, what is the fifth term? Well, you take the exponent on the x, so 7. 7 times the fourth term's coefficient, times 120, divided by 4, right? Divided by the previous term by 4. Well, that's just 7 times 30, which equals 210. That's the fifth coefficient. What's the sixth coefficient? Well, it's 6. It's 6 times, so you know, the exponent on the x times 210 times its coefficient, times the fifth term's coefficient, divided by 5 for the fifth term. Well, 5 goes into 210 how many times? 42 times, right? So it's 6 times 42. That's 240 plus 12. That's 252, right? 252. And then once you're at the middle point, Right, x, the sixth term is the middle term. You'll see that you know you you start going back the other way, and we learned one from the Pascal's triangle, or even the definition of the binomial theorem, that that the coefficients are symmetric. So we know that the next one is going to be the same. This was the middle one, right? So we know the next one's going to be two ten. It's going to be two ten, and you could you could calculate it using the same system. I'm just this is just a quick way of doing it. This one's going to be one twenty. This one's going to be forty five, and uh, this one. This one is going to be the tenth coefficient. This is going to be ten, and then of course the last coefficient is just one, one y to the tenth power. So, so if I were to write this out, the answer is, and if you practice this, you'll find that you can do it quite fast. It's x to the tenth, x to the tenth, plus ten x to the ninth y, plus forty-five x to the eighth, sorry, x to the eighth y squared plus 120 x to the seventh y to the third plus 210 x to the sixth y to the fourth plus 252 we're already at the middle term x to the fifth y to the fifth plus 210 x to the fourth y to the sixth I'm running out of space but you can you can hopefully extrapolate what I'm doing and it makes sense to you. And hopefully you have an appreciation that if you actually had to multiply out x plus y to the 10th, it would have taken you all day. Maybe I'll do one more video uh, with, a, with a smaller example to show you that it's a little less complicated when you do, say, x plus y to the 6th power.